Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Introduction to Orthodoxy. I am Father John Brown from Holy Transfiguration Greek Orthodox Church in Marietta, Georgia. So let's go ahead and begin our class. How can we know God? God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. This is Psalm 117, verse 27. It's also chanted at all Orthodox Orthros services. <clears throat> God has revealed himself to humanity many times and in many ways. One of the primary ways he reveals himself is in nature. The psalmist writes, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor knowledge where their voice is not heard. The psalmist calls nature God's handiwork. An attentive observer can learn a lot about a craftsman from his handiwork. Likewise, we can learn a lot about God by observing his handiwork in nature. Psalm 104 rejoices in God's presence in creation. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a tent, who lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind. You laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At their rebuke, your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. The, they went up over the mountains. They went down into the place, to the valleys, to the place which you have founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them, the birds of the air have their home. They sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and veg vegetation for the service of man so that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread which strengthens man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap the cedars of Lebanon, which he planted, where the birds make their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. The high hills are for the wild goats. The cliffs are a refuge for the brock badgers. He appointed the moon for the seasons. The sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you have made to play there. All these wait for you that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May the sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Psalm 104, which is this rejoicing in God's presence and his creation, is sung at every Vespers service in the Orthodox Church. God has revealed himself in nature. And this is especially true, perhaps, in the stars, the, the star aspect of nature. The psalmist says in Psalm 97, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. So anybody who in the world that looks up at the sky in the evening, and whether they are from whatever continent, whatever their background may be, they can look up at the sky every night 
and perceived the presence of God that put the stars there. This was true of the three wise men or the magi as they're often also called who followed the stars through which God revealed himself. In Matthew 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. So these wise men followed the stars in order to see the Christ child. God also reveals to himself to some people in dreams. There are several cases of this in the Bible. One is Pharaoh in Genesis. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Now, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, it's a different king now, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what would come to pass after this. And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what that will be. That was, of course, the words of Daniel, the prophet. Another case was at Christ's crucifixion when Pilate was considering how he would judge Christ. It's in the middle of that story, this small detail pops up. Matthew 27, 19. While he, Pilate, was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. So God revealed himself, uh, or at least an un understanding of some, that what was happening was of tremendous significance. God also reveals himself in the best of human nature. Genesis 1, 26 through and, 20, and 2, 7 says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Orthodoxy places great emphasis on the image of God and humanity. We believe that every human being is the handiwork of the creator and therefore has within them a natural creaturely affinity with him. The fall has damaged that natural affinity but has not destroyed it. Our connection to God is in our very DNA. Because we believe that every human being has the image of God within them, we are not surprised when people outside the household of faith sincerely follow that image and arrive at some degree of truth and virtuous behavior. Many early Christians saw this phenomenon in the pre-Christian Greek philosophers. Some early Christian philosophers concluded that the ancient Greek philosophers were so close to divine truth that they must have received it from the Israelites. Justin Martyr, one of the premier philosophers of the first couple of centuries of the Christian church said this, whatever the philosophers and poets have said about the immortality of the soul or punishments after death or contemplation of things heavenly or judgments of the like kind, they have received such suggestions from the prophets and these have enabled them to interpret these things. And hence there seem to be seeds of truth among all men. Part of being created in the image of God is all humanity is born with a conscience, an inborn sense of right and wrong. In every culture, including those far from any Christian influence, there are certain moral principles that are keenly felt. Christ taught what has been called the golden rule. Christ said, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This same moral precept is taught in Buddhism. Buddhism says, treat not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. 
Hinduism says, this is the sum of duty. Do not or do nothing unto others what you would not have them to do to you. The Pima tribe of the Native Americans have a proverb. Do not wrong or hate your neighbor, for it is not he who you wrong, but yourself. An excellent example of God revealing himself to someone outside the customary household of faith is the Roman centurion in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. As a Roman, the centurion presumably worshipped Roman gods and goddesses. He was certainly far from the truth that God had revealed to the Jews, yet he drew upon his life experiences, keen observation, and sense of the supernatural power of Christ. The Gospels say, now when Jesus had entered into Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Christ gave high praise to the centurion who followed the dim light that had been revealed to him. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. There are limitations on God revealing himself to us in nature and in our image of him. While God's revelation of himself to humanity through nature and our divine image is very real and valuable, it is also limited. The Apostle Paul writes about the reality of natural revelation, it is often called. Paul writes, for when Gentiles who do not have the law by, do, by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So Paul is uh, accepting and agreeing with the concept of God revealing himself through nature and in their humanity to Gentiles that did not have the Jewish law as their guide. In Romans 1.20, Paul identifies what revelation through nature can do. He writes, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So he says that, uh, that everyone can determine uh, through natural revelation that there is a God and he is eternal and that he is power. He is uh, of all power. But Paul also makes it clear that knowledge of God's existence and eternal power revealed in nature should not be counted upon to save. Because he concludes that verse, Romans 1.20, by saying this, of such people who were seeing God or could correctly perceive God and his eternal power and Godhead, he says, they are without excuse. So this alone is a caution to us not to rely upon this exclusively to arrive at an acceptable relationship with God. Also, while we can perceive God through nature and our own humanity, we usually do not fully understand what we are perceiving. God sent a true revelation to Pharaoh in the form of a dream, but Pharaoh needed Joseph to interpret it for him. God sent a genuine revelation to Nebuchadnezzar in the form of a dream, but Nebuchadnezzar needed Daniel to interpret it for him. If sensing God through nature and our humanity were enough, all by itself, to assure of a true, a true relationship with God, then the incarnation, crucifixion, and resurrection of Christ would have been entirely unnecessary. God's revelation of himself to us in nature and in our humanity is like Morse code. It is a true form of communication, but not a satisfactory form of communication enough to maintain a significant relationship. God wants a profound and intimate relationship with us humans. He does not want to send us messages in Morse code. He invites us to his house for a sumptuous feast. 
he has given to us in his church a rich form of revelation of himself that is more than enough to maintain the relationship he wants with us. Orthodoxy calls it holy tradition. We will explore holy tradition in the next class. Thank you for joining me on this class. Here is my email address. Please feel free to give me a uh, drop me a note or email if you have uh, questions or comments or concerns. And hope to see you this time next week. And may the Lord God bless all here. Have a blessed day.